אמר רב אושעיה. אוקיי, רבותיי, we are on page, מסכת ברכות on page ג' עמוד ב', second column, and now we shall go into the text of the Talmud, continuing what we, what we spoke about yesterday. Remember we said that David HaMelech, even though he was a great king, and believe me, he was extremely busy, and the Talmud is going to tell us how busy he was soon. Nevertheless, his life was the Torah. As a king, he spent his nights learning Torah. So we are going to learn about this. Amar Rab Oshaya. Amar Rabbi Acha. Rab Oshaya, Rab Oshaya said on behalf of Rabbi Acha. מעולם לא אמר דוד, אחי כאמר דוד, קינג דיוויד סד, אפן הימסלף, מעולם לא עבר עלי חצות לילה בשינה. I have never spent a midnight sleeping, which means on midnight, that's when he was awake, which means never, he, he testifies upon himself that he never slept from midnight and on. Unbelievable. Which means he did not sleep before midnight, so midnight will come when he is asleep. Such a thing never happened. In those times, it is a very big chidush, it's a very big novelty. It's not like today. Today people stay watching television till midnight anyway. So most, of people, are, most people are awake at, at that time, right? Talmidei Hachamim, of course, they sit down and they are also not asleep because they study Torah. Our sages said, La ibre laila ela le girsa. The night was created only for the purpose to study. Because the night is quieter, most people are asleep. That's the best time to study. And that's why God created the night. That's not the only reason, but that's what the sages say. That one of the reasons why God created the night is so that you could still sit down and learn Torah. So I'm not talking about Talmidei Hachami, but most people today, in those modern times, they stay watching television, watching this, watching the football, sometimes even beyond the midnight. But in the times of David Melech, when people went to sleep at 6 o'clock in the evening when it was already dark, it's a big chidush when you tell me that David Melech was awake on midnight, every midnight. Rabbi Zera Amar, Rabbi Zera said, עד חצות לילה היה מתנמנם כסוס, מכאן ואילך היה מתגבר כארי. Of course you should ask me how come he didn't sleep at all, or perhaps he slept until midnight, and then at midnight he woke up. Well, as I said before, in ancient times, when it was dark, that's the time to go to sleep. Did he sleep really? He did not. So the Gemara tells us, Rav Zera says, for until midnight, he slept, but not the usual way. He slept like a horse. What is to sleep like a horse? You know how, uh, how a horse sleeps? Standing. He doesn't go to bed. And his sleep is very, very uh, light. The slightest things awakens him. That's the horse. So, in our understanding, mitnamnem, in Hebrew means, he goes like this. Mm, up. Drifting off. Mm, up. That's mitnamnim. Half asleep, half awake. That's called mitnamnim. Tenuma, in the words of Mishle, is sleep. Mitnamnim is getting to sleep. A little. So that's what happens at night. But by the time midnight arrives, he makes a tremendous effort because by then, that's exactly the time when he, is, he should be completely deeply asleep, not like a horse. But the truth is that at that time, he would exert himself to the point of being like a lion. He makes an effort, the effort of a lion, mitgaber ka'ari, and he would wake up. And then, no more. Now, it's only Torah. All night. That's what the Gemara says. So, Rabzera Amar Ad Chatzot Laila Hayamit Namnem Kasus. Sus is a horse. 
מכאן ואילך היה מתגבר כארי. Because you could, you should ask me, why is it that the, the, the Talmud is choosing this kind of expression? Mitgaber ka'ari. He makes a left, he, 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 is, uh, he becomes strong like a lion. Well, I have two reasons why the Talmud is using here term for a lion, which is a beast. Number one, because if you watch, if you go to the Shulchan Aruch, The first chapter of Shulchan Aruch Maran begins with the words Yidgaber Ka'ari Be strong like a lion to wake up every morning You know, in the morning it's not easy to, to wake up but you have to be strong You make an effort, get up! That's being strong like a lion because the lion, once he wakes up that's it, he is out there So that's the, the Ari The second reason is because since he started with the horse He sleeps like a horse, which means mid-sleep. Now he uses the term of the lion. You understand? So that's one of the things that one should observe in this kind of expression. But in the total normality of the understanding of our sages, always to make an effort is to be strong like a lion. Why? Because the lion represents power. And that's what we need, the power against Satan. Like our sages said, is there will be bore. Who is the one who, who merits to be called Gibor, which means very strong, not the one who goes against uh, his enemy only. But if you go against your supreme enemy, and the supreme enemy is Satan, if you go against your Satan, and Satan comes every time when you go to sleep, especially he tells you there is still time. Why should you wake up? It's so cold outside. It's still dark. Go back to sleep. That's Satan. So, Giborkari, be strong like a lion in order to defeat the trials of uh, Satan. Okay, let's go on. Rab Ashi Amar, Rab Ashi says, Ad Chatzot Laila, Haya Osek Bedivre Torah, Mikan Vailach, Beshirot Vetishbachot. Rab Ashi does not agree with Rabbi Zera. Remember, what, what is it that Rabbi Zera said? that David HaMelech did sleep a little, only he did not sleep deeply. He slept like a horse, which means in and on, uh, uh, on and off, right? And then, uh, until midnight, right? And then from midnight to the morning, he was studying Torah. According to Rav Asheh, there is no such a thing. According to Rav Asheh, David HaMelech did not sleep at all. What do you mean he did not sleep at all? Then what did he do? in the evening, when uh, everybody goes to sleep. Well, Rabbi Asher says, from, let's say, 6 o'clock, it's dark in the evening. That's the time when he sits down to study, because the day is very busy, taking care of everything, taking charge of the whole country. But when it is dark and everybody goes to sleep, that's when he sits down to study Torah, until midnight. At midnight, he doesn't go to sleep. Now he starts singing. The praises, you know, that we know, the Psalms that he wrote, 150 Psalms. When, when did he do them? During those uh, hours from midnight to the morning. That's according to Rav Asheh. According to Rav Asheh, uh, David HaMelech does not sleep at all. At, at all. Of course. You should now ask me a question. How is it possible? Why Rav Asheh, what is he talking about? Don't, doesn't he know that a human being needs to sleep? Let me tell you something. Rav Asheh, of course, he was the genius of his generation. He lived uh, close to 1,800 years ago in Babel. He was the last of the sages of the Amoraim. He is the one who closed the Talmud. After Rav Asheh, he couldn't put anything anymore in the Talmud. He canonized the Talmud, him and Ravina. Ravina and Rav Asheh. This was the fifth generations, the fifth generation of the sages of the Gemara. As you know, they were, there was uh, gener five generations before the sages of the Mishnah, like Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Tarfon, Rabbi Yoshua, Rabbi Yehuda, up to Rabbi Noah Kadosh. After Rabbi Noah Kadosh begins the time of the sages of the Gemara with Rabbi Shmuel, that's the first one, in Babel, or Rabbi Yohanan in Yerushalayim, in Eretz Israel. And then the second generation was Rav Hunna, And then the third generation was uh, Rav Chizda, and all the sages, of course, that were at that time. The fourth generation was uh, Abbaye and Rava. The third generation was also Rabbi and Rav Yosef. 
The fourth generation was Abaye and Rava. Those were the champions, the great ones, among millions of other Talmidah Hakamim. And the fifth generation, the big Rosh Hashiva was Rav Ashe and Ravina. Those were the ones who closed the Talmud. After that, after that began the generation of the Geonim. Of course, there was a 70 years a period of Sevoraim, but then began the era of the of the Geonim, which consisted of uh, at least five to six hundred years. You understand? And then a thousand years ago and so, began the time of the Rishonim, with Rabbi Yitzhak el Fasi, Harambam, and the Andrashi, the Tosfot, and all these. Those are known as the Rishonim. And then, 500 years ago, after the exile, the Jews were expelled from Spain, began the time of the Aharonim, until today. The last sages, until today. We are still in the, in the generation of the Aharonim. So Rav Asheh was the last generation of the sages of the Gemara. And he closed the... So he was not a small guy. He was the biggest genius of his time. And he's telling us that David Amelech did not sleep at all. What does it mean? So there is a way how to explain that. I'm sure you heard of the Vilna Gaon. The Vilna Gaon, Rabbi Eliyahu Zalman mi Vilna, he lived 250 years ago. He was like the, the angel of God here in this world. He was a genius, unbelievable. Nobody can be like... A, maybe only in the time of the Tanaim, of the, of the Mishnah. But no one can equal the greatness of Rabbi uh, the Gra, the Vilna Gaon. And apparently, with all the fact that he was blessed with a, an electronic mind, photographic memory, he could study in one hour what we study in one year. He could do it in one hour. And yet, you think, having a mind like this, he could do everything that we do in one minute. So, he has time. No. The more he was such a great genius, he didn't want to spend, he didn't want to waste enough in a minute, so he never went to sleep. What do you mean? Again, the question presents itself: Is it possible that one can stay without sleep? The answer is: There is a statement in the Talmud in Masechet Sukkah, where we find that if one sleeps more than half hour, you know, you know how we start to sleep. First, we sleep a little. And then after about half hour, approximately, there is a certain calculation that our sages gave, did for us. After half hour, you are deeply asleep. When you are deeply asleep, that's when you taste death. Our sages said that deep sleep is like one sixty-eighth of death. Echad mishishim mimita shena. You know what happens when we wake up in the morning? What do we have to do immediately? We have to wash our hands. Why? Because there is evil, an evil Tum'ah that is on our hands because of the night. And why is that? Because we were dead. We were practically dead. And since the dead is tame, is impure, we are also impure. So, almost without exception, everybody tastes the taste of death every night when we go to sleep, when we are deeply asleep. You know what is deeply asleep? When you don't feel anything. Of course, if somebody will scream in your ears, you will wake up. Uh, but usually, you are asleep, you don't feel anything. You are dreaming, ho ho. There were a few great persons in the history of the Jewish people who didn't want to taste the taste of death. One of them is David Amelech. The other one is the Vilna Gaon, close to us. They didn't want to taste the taste of God. So what did they do? They didn't want to taste the taste of death. So they did sleep. Three times a day. Every time less than half hour. And for example, the Vilna Gaon would sleep like this. Then some say that his, his, uh, his, his feet were immersed in icy water. This way he doesn't fall asleep completely. And then he got used to it. His body got used to it. And now he doesn't sleep anymore. He sleeps only this half hour, and that's it. Half hour now, half hour later on, half hour later on, three times, maybe four times. Those who were watching the Vilna Gaon, they said two hours in 24 hours he slept. But again, he divided them in half hour. This way he doesn't taste the taste of death. The Gemara in Masichet Sukkah tells us that the same thing happened with David Amelech. He did not want to taste the taste of death, therefore he did not sleep. 
How can you do such a thing? I tell you the truth, Rabotai. Not that you should do it. Nobody should do it. Because it's not healthy. Our sage said, based on the Pasuk, Yashanti az yanuahli. Az is Aleph and Zayn. Aleph and Zayn is eight. Eight hours is what we have. everybody has to sleep to be healthy. Maybe in some cases seven hours. Right? But the best for health is eight hours. In fact, it's known that the Chafetz Chaim, you know, in every yeshiva you have always individuals that don't want to go to sleep. They keep on learning, learning, and they stay very late at night. The Chafetz Chaim in his yeshiva in Radin, he would go to the yeshiva at midnight to see if there is someone. He would tell him, go to sleep. But there are always exceptions. There are people who made it. I, I'll tell you another one who lived approximately 100 years ago, the Netziv, Rabbi Naftali Tzvi Yehuda Berlin, the one who wrote uh, uh, his great Pirush uh, on the, on the She'il Tot of Rav Achai Gaon, or the, 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 the Pirush of Ahmed Davar on the Torah. The Netziv was a Gaon Atzu. You know, in the middle of the night, at 3 o'clock in the morning, he had a big question in his mind. So he called, I mean, they came to, to ask him for that question, and they found him wide awake at 3 o'clock in the night. So his son-in-law, he could not help it but admire so much his father-in-law. And he said to him, my father-in-law, you don't go to sleep at all. I mean, we came here to ask you at 3 o'clock in the morning and you are wide awake. He says, what do you mean? You mean to, to tell me that you go to sleep, you are asleep when it is 3 o'clock in the morning? Shame on you. <laughs> but as I said, those were exceptions. People should not follow that, even though there are people who are, we call them matmidim. They stay the persist in learning. You know what happens to people like that? Some of them did succeed to overcome the power of sleep. You know, today if you do that, you will become sick. There are many kinds of sicknesses that will come upon somebody who doesn't sleep enough. You know that. Even high blood pressure could come from that. Today they say even cancer. All kinds of things. But there were a few exceptions who did it and were not affected. Their body, in fact, Rabbi Avigdor Miller told us once that the Vilna Gaon, nobody saw him really. He was all the time in his house learning, except a group that came to him every time. He didn't have a yeshiva, he didn't have rabbanut, he didn't have anything. Only people all over the world, they knew him. So his reputation was so great, was so famous, that people were desired to see him, just to see his face. It was very difficult. I could tell you other stories about this, but not all the time. No, Vilna, Vilna. Vilna, that's, uh, that's in, in Russia. Then today is... Uh, how do you call it in English? No, no, Lithuania. Lithuania. Lithuania is uh, Vilna. He was there. Sure. So the Vilna Gaon, Rabbi Eliyahu Zalman Mi Vilna, was a great genius. He was a Gaon Atsum. There is nobody like him. They say about the Vilna Gaon that he, uh, even if you know the Torah from A to Z, he knows it from A to Z and then from Z to A. Try to say Shema Israel, the, uh, the, 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 the opposite word. He will find it is difficult. Well, the whole Torah he knew by heart, even back and, uh, and backwards. Anyway, so one day there was a woman who wanted to see the face of the Vilna Gaon. And everybody knows he doesn't sleep. They used to take ladders to see whether he's still uh, learn. Oh, they would see the, the, that he's learning all night. So he must be very, very sick then. So there was a woman who said, I want to see him. They wouldn't let her because at, in, at 5 o'clock in the morning, the Vilna Gaon would go with the Shamash to the Mikveh, finish the Mikveh, the Tevila, and then come back home. Nobody sees him. But the woman says was persistent. This was told to us by Rabbi Avigdor Miller, Arava Shalom. She said, I want to see him. So she came at, at 5 o'clock in the morning, knowing that he is going to come out from the house. And she went under a small bridge, a small bridge that was made of pieces of wood. And between each piece, there is some space. Yeah. So she went to hide underneath to see him from the... And what did she... And, and she testifies to the fact that she saw a fat man. She saw he had a double chin. She said, how oh, is it possible? A man who doesn't sleep usually loses weight. And this man didn't seem to have lost weight. Double chin. 
Of course, you could have anything you want in your imagination. Maybe somebody brought him food and he ate without... No, 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 you have to understand that everything is well documented. That's the point. No, but that's not the point. I mean, we are not just throwing words here. They said something that is based and well established. Why? I would say, the, the, the Hachamim said the reason he was healthy because when he learned Torah, he learned with great happiness. He was so happy, he couldn't get sick. You know that? You want to win against the disease? Be happy. No stress. He was so happy because he had the treasure of the Torah in his, in his hands that he didn't care about eating. He hardly ate also. Was he married? Of course he was married. And he has children also and everything. His na the name of his, of his son was Rabbi Avraham. Rabbi Avraham Vilna also another Gaon. Not like his father, but another Gaon. So let's try to conclude this even though we stray to other things. So, you understand? So Rav Ashi says, No, David Amelech is not the type to go to sleep, not even like a horse. When, when it gets dark, he sits down to learn Torah. From then, from midnight unto the morning, Beshirot Vetishbachot. Which means that's when he started to sing and praise the Lord. That's one kind of adoration that he used to. He used to write poems and things that stay in, and he would address the Lord. So let's stop right here, having in mind the two great figures that we discussed tonight, David Melech and the Vilna Gaon. <laughs>